putting it over here. And I didn't. And I thought, you know, how stupid it would be to argue about where this table's going to go. But it, it was, I was so close to saying, no, I want it over there. And what the hell difference does it make? And it took everything in me not to say that. And so I walked out of the room and she put it where she wanted it. And I came back in and it was fine. But when I wrote in my journal last night, that was one of the things I learned yesterday was my way is not always right there's other ways to do things and we get so stuck in that doing things are I remember mowing the grass I had to mow it the way my father told me to mow it or he would come unfreaking glued mm-hmm. you're supposed to go down and back not round and round <laughs> round and round was easier <laughs> for, for a little eight-year-old skinny girl <laughs> and I think it's so beautiful when you can actually you know take somebody's feedback and whether or not you want to do something with it in that moment maybe you know a couple months from now you want to but I would say the last several months my eyes have been opened up in so many ways to just culturally differences in how we not only we speak and the foods that we eat but just how people go about the same things that I used to do in my daily life and do things differently but it Mm -hmm. all still gets done Right. and I think of that when I was a manager you know I would tell people to do something to serve in way and they might not do it exactly but we still got the same outcome but right. along the way I wanted to coach them and be like no you're doing it wrong but like sometimes yep. I did that but then what, honestly it was really once I started my mindfulness journey and doing a lot of this work on myself where I really started to step back and just learn to let things go because it still got to the same outcome. And it's not always easy. It's not easy at all. It's not. Um, I have to resist so hard because uh-huh. I'm extremely opinionated sometimes. Right, me and I too, just, like, yeah. want to be authoritative. I don't know. I just want to control things sometimes. Um, but I think it's so beautiful. We can actually sit back and we learn something from yes. somebody else. And, I mean, you and I were talking, too, just about even generational differences <laughs> that I can learn from you and you can learn from me. And, you know, how, you know, in the workplace, I'm starting to see more mentorship programs like this, too, mm-hmm. where they're pairing somebody that's a 20-year event and somebody right year, right out of school as, like, mentors and mentees. And how and the good younger, that is. The younger person is being a mentor for the older person to bring them up on technology or things like that. I think that's so cool, as long as you're open to it. Right. But still, I, I love the love that idea. And that actually is one of the things on this self-improvement list, is find a mentor. Oh, is it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think um, even parenting. I could, the, When you were talking about there, there, there's the right way, the wrong way, and then my way. That's, I've heard my dad say that over life. There's the right way, the wrong way, and then your mother's way. But parenting, I have vivid recollections of times my husband and I worked opposite shifts. My daughter was young, and I would come home to find her in the scariest clothes oh. ever. <laughs> and... You know, it's one Can of you the, give us an example, a visual back example? To pick your battle, striped purple and green on the top and flowered pants. Nice. Oh, my God. I remember coming home one day and looking at her, and he could see the look in my face. And he started to list things like, you didn't have to dress her. She picked it out and was excited to pick it. Are we going? And he was just going through it all, and I thought, you're right. Uh, really? What's the big deal? Right. Nothing matched. She was happy. She was playing. She was dressed. Who cares? It right. was done. There right. Was, there, there's a different way to do it. The, the fact is she was dressed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, one time when I was down visiting my little granddaughter, Mike, my son, has Thursdays with her. It's just those two. And uh, so I was down there with them, and the mom came home. I didn't say anything, but she had on a onesie over top of her pants. It was... <laughs> You know, snapped under it. And I said to Mike, did you dress her this morning? He said, yeah. And I went, and I didn't say Let anything. It, it looked cute, you know. So his, his. Um, this is how trends there start. Be, yeah, right? sure. like so, the million dollar ideas could be flourishing from right. this stuff sometimes. So Christine comes home and she looks at Avery and she goes, were we going for the ballerina look today, Mike? <laughs> he goes, what? Her pants will never fall off. <laughs> There's many pop sides to that look. Oh, my gosh. I laughed so And Mike started dressing himself very young, and he was one of those kids that really didn't care. The older one had to match. He, that was his thing. 
And Mikey would come out and I'd say, Mike, that doesn't match. And he'd say, and he'd have like plaid and so, stripes or, you know, weird thing. And he'd go, yes, it does blue to blue, <laughs> green to green. And my oldest one would look at me and he'd say, he'd say you can't argue with that, Mom. <laughs> he was right. We're those, good. We're good to go. Yeah. It was so funny. I can't wait yeah. to have kids one day. Oh, it's a blast. <laughs> I loved having my kids. They were very funny. You don't have them anymore? I do, but they're not children. <laughs> I, I can't boss them around and laugh anymore. It's, they they say really funny things. That's one of the funnest things about having kids are the things that they say. Yeah. Which is another show. Um, okay, let's do one more. There, You can pick. There's stay focused with to-do lists, set big, hairy, audacious goals, show kindness. Reach out to the people who hate you. Take a break. Read at least one personal development article a day or commit to your personal growth by writing lists. Oh, Pick so one that you ones. want to talk about. I'd say kindness. I was going to say love. The kindness and reaching out to people who hate you really is probably not even their perception. You, They may not even hate you. That's your perception. Mm-hmm. So just be kind to people that it's difficult to be kind to. It's easy to be kind to people who are kind to you. It's easy to be kind to people you like. It's easy to be kind to those people. That comfort zone thing again. Mm -hmm. Be kind to the person that's always snarky. Be kind to the person who's always cutting in front of you in front of the line. Oh, that's tough. Or driving is my worst thing. They don't know I'm not being kind, but very often I'm not. Uh, <laughs> you belong in Chicago then, because I think I, the drivers here are so driver. passive. Oh, you do? Oh you my know, gosh, I'm, nobody honks their horn here. It's so nice. I got honked the other day. Did you really? Yes, and it was... And it was so stupid. Was it when the light turned green and they immediately Well, that happened, too. I might bring this out in people. I don't know. Probably cut them off. I did not. (laughs) I'm so careful. But he thought I did. Uh. But I didn't. And it was kind of funny. But I could be having the best day and get in that car to go somewhere and be pissed off by the time I get home. (laughs) Because... (laughs) Of the way other people drive, and I, I used to drive here. in California traffic. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I got inoculated to this now. Well, LA traffic is known to be the worst traffic. It, oh, right? horrible. Yeah, but, but I always lived up north. For the driving in LA is like pulling your molars when they don't want to come out. Hmm. Is that a good analogy? Well, I've never driven in LA. You don't so want to, else. Beth. I don't like. I don't drive hardly anywhere. Anymore, you so. definitely don't want to drive in L.A. I can promise you that. But you think, either, for that matter. What? Want to drive in L.A.? Oh no! I lived and in Northern done, California. I have and driven it was in L.A. Enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, it's we, crazy. We did our road trip, at, like going oh. through California, and L.A. was by far the worst. And unfortunately, my friend and I did not time oh. it where we were literally going through rush hour traffic, and it took us about two hours to go. Maybe well, and that's five Chicago miles. too, though. Yeah, and I didn't have a car in Chicago. I would really just have rentals, and when people came in town, so I was fortunate enough that I didn't have to deal with that. But in the public transportation, is there is so fantastic. excellent. Yeah, but, that's yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think for me, the just the topic of kindness is just putting ourselves in other people's shoes and thinking about like what kind of crap did they experience that morning maybe they're not typically somebody that rants and raves and complains all the time unless you get the same cashier at the store who never (laughs) smiles right then you know something's going on more long term but I feel like for me sometimes when people treat me like that I just want to I just want to smile back or like give them a hug to be like life doesn't have to be like this but you, you just know that they're hurting, right? So right. I to put myself in other people's shoes, which is hard, but I I think that my mindfulness practice has helped me, cl- you know, cultivate more empathy in how I look at people and being able to say, because I was suffering and people didn't know it, but mm-hmm. I was suffering on the inside, but I looked happy on the outside. But sometimes my temper would take off when certain things were triggered. Mm-hmm. And now I know what those triggers are and I can change, but we have to do this work in order to be able to show more kindness and love mm-hmm. and let go of things that used to stress us out. Right. So, And, you know, it's so... A smile is free. You have an endless supply of them. 
and it takes less muscles to smile than it does to frown. And it's just something that you should really focus on doing more. Yeah. And that's the end of it. And that's kindness on your face is yeah. worth something to people that you don't know and really and look at when I walk in and best smiles that warms my heart it's so it doesn't matter if you know the person or not when totally. I see your smile I it just lights me up yeah the smiles are so precious it's contagious have you guys Let's ever seen smile. I think it's a Coca-Cola commercial where they um, stage somebody on a train and everybody's on their phone or doing things and this guy just starts laughing out of nowhere and everybody kind of looks at him like oh he's really strange why is he <laughs> laughing and he's just reading a book or something like that and he keeps doing it uh-huh. and then they throughout the commercial they show everybody just starts laughing and then eventually they like pull back their marketing t-shirts and oh. show coca-cola start handing cokes out but i love Coke that because that's so cool it's really, yes it's contagious and like you said it's free like i love hearing the stories my little brother told me he did this a couple of months ago where he bought somebody's coffee in the starbucks yeah, line behind that's him so and I'm nice. like, that's so sweet and he's like well little did i know they were spending like twelve dollars uh-huh. you know what is still what's twelve dollars for me and I just saw somebody did that it was a Facebook video and somebody behind them was like freaking out and she decided that instead of reacting and getting mad she got out of her car and just said something like you know I'm assuming that you're having a really bad day and said some encouraging words and then she was like I'm going to pay for your coffee today and the Uh, lady hugged her and was like oh my god you have no idea how much this means and she named up all these things that happened to her that morning how beautiful yeah not that every thing it, it is focused around Facebook and social media but there was a campaign out there and it was another commercial one of those little inspirational motivational videos on probably Facebook um, a gentleman's morning a little kid went behind his car and he had to stop short backing out of the driveway he's chewing the kid out and then he drives to the coffee shop and somebody cuts in front of him at the coffee shop and then he's going I mean everything it wasn't went wrong that day he went to pick up his dry cleaning and it wasn't ready and, and really he's grown grumpier and grumpier and grumpier and then he's sitting down somewhere and this mystery person hands him some glasses and it just says put these on and all of a sudden rewind start of the day little boy has no Uh parent at home so he just knows there's one man pretty much in the neighborhood and he just is curious and he's driving he's riding a skateboard by he just wants someone to spend five minutes with him because his mom works three jobs to keep them going and then the guy in the coffee shop just got a phone call from his doctor you have cancer and so he wasn't thinking and yes he just Uh accidentally stopped in front stepped in front of someone in the line because he was very distracted with the diagnosis mm-hmm. and really these glasses you can see these little conversation wow, bubbles on everyone's cool. life and the yeah. woman that's arguing with her kids is exhausted because she just worked third shift and has got to get the kids somewhere and, and it's like okay take a breath you don't like you said you don't know everyone's right. backstory right. you don't know how maybe charmed your life really Mm-hmm. Kind of is when right. you're, and there is sometimes when I will think and I will look up and go, when when you hear yourself go, God, this day couldn't get any worse. Oh, yes. Oh, it don't could. ever say that. Oh, yeah, yes, don't ever say that. And there are a lot of ways this day could be worse. So take a breath and get over yourself because it could get worse. Mm-hmm. And be nice to somebody today because their day is worse than mm-hmm. yours. Amen. So, th- and that's absolutely the truth. And on Facebook, there's so many really good examples like the man the other day that took off his shirt and gave it to a homeless guy and then went and bought him shoes. There's a barber that cuts homeless people's hair once a month. He just sets up a little barber shop on a corner and all the homeless people come and get their hair cut. So there's so many wonderful kind people out there be one of them it doesn't really take that much energy yeah i know and it's hard to you know have hope that there's still kindness out there when you sometimes you see the news and you hear all of the things that are happening in the world and you start to lose hope Mm -hmm. that god there's no Mm -hmm. there's no good people anymore Mm -hmm. and you can start with you you know, it can just start with some of these small habits. And I know that, and I truly believe that there's so much hope and there's so much good. And I choose to see that, but I choose to take things that happen to me that I don't think are good and then change that into something beautiful for me because it's all about our perception sometimes too, right? Yes. And something um, beautiful. What's that? I know. I don't know. Maybe a company name. <laughs> Maybe a website. <laughs> a website. That you can go www. to. www.somethingbeautiful.co. Oh. Check it out. That's Libby. Libby does our morning meditation, our morning and evening meditation. 
It starts at 7 o'clock. Is it 6 o'clock or 7? 6 6 o'clock. And 11 p.m. And 11 p.m. So um, listen to those. We're going to re-be doing those. (laughs) Yes. Give me some more of that wine, Beth. (laughs) Re-be doing those. See, that's one of the dialects I was talking about. 